Hello all, I am Reed Graff, the student coach for the Team Timber X, team number 17682. And here now we're going to be making a video series on uh, robotics, uh, everything you're going to be able to need to know for the FTC competition. Uh, what is the FTC competition, as well as uh, everything you can need to know to be a successful mechanical software uh, engineer. So as a table of contents and how this series is actually going to work, we're first going to make a series on building. So everything you need to know about being a mechanical engineer, as well as just building and designing the structure of a robot, whether it be in a 3D space or actually uh, hands-on. Following that, we're going, to be making a, um, we're going to be making a series on programming. So everything about programming a robot and maintaining all the functions of a robot. So whether that be using AI and using sensory input to move the robot around during our autonomous period or using a controller to move it around during our teleop period. And then finally, we're going to be working on our engineering notebook as well as talking about how you can positively impact your community. So how about building a design? So what is CAD? Phoenix, you want to come up here and talk about CAD? Sure. Uh, computer aided design, or CAD, is uh, what we use in all of our, uh, our daily activities and our TimberX uh, team. Um, we can use it for modeling uh, many things for our robot and custom parts, such as our grab mechanism, uh, our drivetrain, and, and uh, other things such as uh, like our um, skirts. Uh, it can also be used to uh, make anything you really want in the real world. So it's pretty useful for TimberX and uh, FTC in general. Definitely. So the most popular CAD softwares that um, robotics team use through FTC and FRC is Onshape, and then secondly is Dassault Systems, uh, but we recommend Fusion 360. Fusion 360 comes with a host of different tools that you're able to use. It allows, it, 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 uh, allows users to easily collaborate with other users in a team space, uh, and then also it allows us uh, to use a bunch of their pre-made tools for 3D, model, uh, for 3D printing and other manufacturing methods. Uh, and in terms of downloading Fusion 360, there's just a link right here if you're going to go ahead and do that right now. Uh, but you can also just search it up as Fusion 360 free student download. All right, so once you get into Fusion 360, this is the first part that we want you to design. This is a very simple cube, um, but in order to design this part, um, what you first have to imagine the part is, is if you squish it down into one profile, and then you're going to extrude all those different profiles. So let's actually get into Fusion 360 and do that. So this is what Fusion 360 is going to look like once you sign up or create an account. And then all you're going to have to do is go up right here to where it says create a sketch. And you're going to click that button. And then you can go ahead and click any of these three planes. This is called the origin point right here. It's effectively just one point and 3D space. That's the start of your design. But you can click any of these 3D planes. Uh, I, or 2D planes, I recommend the, the green and red one. Just standard practice. Uh, so now what we go ahead and do is try and model this part. So as we can see, we first have um, a cube that's 2.0 units uh, in length and then 1.5 units across. So we can go ahead and model that now. And I'm going to go ahead and use millimeters, but you can use any type of unit you'd like. And another great thing about Fusion 360 is you can actually upload, uh, you can actually type in your units and it'll automatically make that length. So for example, I could put 2.0 and it's going to default to millimeters for me, but I could put IN, and it's going to default to inches. Or I could put FT, and it could do feet. Uh, so 2.0 by 1.5. We've got to zoom in a little bit. Also, so now that we got that basic cube down, uh, we have to model this section right here, because there's a little cutout. So in order to model that, we can be know, let's see, the distance from here, from here to here is going to be 0 0.5. And then the distance across is going to be 1.5 minus 0 0.5, so 1. So we can go ahead and model that rectangle. So we can grab the two-point rectangle tool, and we select this corner. And the, the, no, the way we know that we're selecting the corner is when it pops up with a little box. And that means it's basically all, uh, automatically magnetized that corner. So once we see that, we can go ahead and click on that corner, and we can drag this out. Um, now we can type in our value. So this one is going to be 0 0.5. And then also, once again, uh, in order to switch from this to this, uh, you're just going to click Tab. And then we're going to type 1.0. Awesome. So now what we're going to want to do is actually get rid of this, because we're not going to extrude this. right? We only want the profile of that part. And in this profile, we're not extruding the space. It's just an empty space. So let's go ahead and get rid of that empty space. In order to do that, there's this Trim tool right here. We can go ahead and select that. 
delete this, delete this, delete this, and then delete this. And there you go. Now we actually have uh, that outline that we're looking for. So how about some other parts that we want to model? Um, so in order to model these, we're going to effectively, once again, imagine it as if it's squished down into one plane. So we're going to have these little profile lines, as you can see in this photo right here. Here I can present. In this photo, this is like a more uh, detailed uh, description on how to do this. And if you want to see this presentation, it's in the description. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, we effectively want to um, put those lines on the sketch itself so we can extrude them. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know the next line we want is going to be around right here. And in order to draw that, we could just use the line tool and draw it. But uh, something that's more common practice would be using the offset tool. And this offset uh, tab is going to open up, and it's going to have a bunch of different options. It's going to ask you to select the curves that you want to offset. It's also going to have a chain selection, on or off switch, and then a flip. So let's, if we wanted to select the entire thing and offset it, we could. But that's not exactly what we're looking to do. Uh, that's what it would look like if we did use that. But if we only wanted to select this line and not everything, we can click chain selections and then we can just offset this line. And then once again, we want to do that at 0 0.5. And you can drag this around if you'd like, or you can just type in your values. 0 0.5. Awesome. Now, once we get, go back over here, we can see that this next part, this next um, line that we're going to want to draw, is also uh, 0 0.5 from here to here. So let's go ahead and sign that. Let's go once again to the offset tool. We can grab this and go 0 0.5. And then once again, that creates an extra line that we're not going to use. So if we want to get rid of that, we can once again use the trim tool. And there we go. That is our profile for the part that we want to extrude. So let's go ahead and try and extrude it now. So once we're done with our profile, we can go up here and click the finish sketch icon up in the top right. After you've selected that, now your sketch is in the 3D space. And we can extrude it using the extrude tool. Right to the right of the create a sketch tool. So let's click extrude, and let's click all the profiles that we want to extrude. So in this case, let's extrude all of these 0 0.5, because that's what it's asking for us uh, for. In our design, as you can see, from here to here, it's 0 0.5. So we type in 0 0.5, and we can just click Enter. And then now, as you can see, our sketch actually disappears. But no worries, it's still there. It's just hidden. Um, as you can see here in our browser, it, it, we have all these different uh, folders. And one of the folders is sketches. And then here's our first sketch. And as you can see, the eye is crossed out, meaning it's hidden. So we can click on that eye. And then now we can see it again. And then we can go ahead and extrude these other parts. So for example, we can go ahead and extrude this. So when you first try to extrude it, it's going to go ahead and try and cut it. But once again, in the extrude um, tab over here, you can change the operation to join. And when you change it to join, instead of cutting away from the material, you're actually going to add to it. And then we can make that the exact height we want. And in this case, it would be 1.2. So 1.2. Awesome. And then we also want to add this little part right here. Another thing to note in the extrude uh, panel or uh, tab is that there are a bunch of different start, uh, you can, a bunch of different options you can change. This is a start, uh, the direction, the extent type, the distance, the taper angle. Uh, another thing that's important to note is in case you don't necessarily know the vertical height of this, but you just know the vertical height relative to other parts of your design, uh, something you can do is you can click start and then you can click object and you can click right here and then we can extend it from that object. So in this case, uh, it's not especially relevant because we don't actually know that. Well, we, we could figure it out using some basic math. But another thing that you're able to do is say you can, you can select the start object for right here and then go down. Uh, but just for the sake of example, we, we can just go with um, profile plane and then extend the correct distance. So in this case, I think it, it would be 1. And then we can change the operation to join.
And there we are. That's our first part in Fusion 360. That is perfectly modeled this part, uh, or this engineering orthographic view of a model. And once again, in the slideshow, there's some more detailed descriptions and like help uh, a place where you can kind of walk yourself through the same process we just did. And then here's some other parts that you can go ahead and design. So uh, it would be good for you to just pause the video right here and go ahead and try and design this yourself. You can open the presentation in another tab, open Fusion 360, and go ahead and just practice designing. Because that's, once again, a lot of uh, learning how to be a good mechanical engineer and a good designer is being able to effectively 3D model and 3D model well and uh, competently. So here's just some example files or example designs that you can go ahead and make. And then here's another one, uh, another one that requires some more advanced skills, perhaps. Um, we can go ahead and design this one together. So in this case, we're going to actually have to use three different sketches instead of one, uh, as we can't really compress this down into one plane. But let's go ahead and get started. So as you see, this is a cube with uh, 100 units across and then 50 units diameter for that circle in the center. So we can go to Fusion. Let's just create a new file. Let's create a sketch, select this plane, select our cube, let's type in 100, and then once again click tab, and then click 100. And then now we want to make a circle in the center. So in order to do that, we can select our line tool, because if we wanted to make a circle in the center, it'd be very difficult if we wanted to try and guess it. Uh, but then again, that's just going to be like very slightly off. As you can see, on the right, yeah, spot, right side here, it goes a little bit off the edge. But if we want to actually find the very center of this uh, rectangle or this uh, square, we can use the line tool and draw a line from this corner to this corner. And then we can grab the di uh, circle tool. And then we can reference the center of that line, which would be the center of the square. Uh, and we know that it's the center because it, says, it has this little triangle right here indicating it the midpoint of a line or a segment. So with that being the case, we can select that midpoint and then drag it out to our distance or type it in, in this case, 50. And then another thing to note is that because we're not extruding this line, we can go ahead and make it a construction line. And with that, you go over here to this line type or the sketch palette, and there's a construction line option. Awesome. So finish sketch, and now we can go ahead and extrude this. 100. And great, so we've got the first part of this design, but now we want to make it to where holes go through every single side. And in order to do that, what we have to do is once again create another sketch. But instead of using one of the sketches that come with the origin, as you can see, these three sketches, we can actually create a sketch on the side of the square, on any of the sides we want. So in this case, we want to make one here. And then the same process, we want to find the center of the square. And then create a circle from the center with a radius of 50, or with a diameter of 50, rather. I'm going to finish that sketch, and we can extrude it. And then another thing to note is, last time we were using the join option, but now we're going to be using the uh, cutting option. So once we'll again, the operation cut. And then another thing to note is, sometimes you want to drag it out, but you don't want to have this extra part on the outside, this part right here. So in order to make it match directly to this distance, you could input the distance. We could say exactly 100, or negative 100, rather and have it perfectly match up. But say, if you don't know that distance, if it's just some skew distance that you don't know, you can click Extend Type, and you can click To Object, and then you can click this face. And then it'll automatically make it whatever the distance is from that face to that face. Another quick shortcut that Fusion 360 offers is if you're in distance, instead of uh, clicking uh, uh, Extend Type and then To Object, and you're, if you're in distance, and you can just click that face, and it'll automatically do it for you. So you can click OK. Now we have a second part to our design, and then now we need one more hole. So we're going to click Create a Sketch, click on this face, find the center of the square, fifty, finish sketch, and then we're going to extrude this all the way through. Okay, and there we are. There's our finished design. So once again, all of this is just to prepare you to get more familiar with 3D modeling. And in order to do that, we also have some additional designs that we recommend that you go ahead and make. And you have all the tools to make this. Both this design as well as the next few. This one 
and these few. I would even recommend making this boat too, because it's pretty cool, why not? <laughs> this, I think, is a chess piece, which is if you're really looking for a challenge, you can go ahead and try and make it. But uh, more importantly, just once you get comfortable with Fusion 360, I'd say you can go ahead and move on to the rest of our series. And this is what we're going to be covering in our next uh, video. So now that you can actually design custom parts, how do you integrate them with real world items? Um, that's it for this series. Uh, this, that's it for this video. I'm Reed Graff from Team Timber X 17682. I'll see you next time.